morning, everybody, and happy Wednesday. As promised, we have uh, the third Bernstein Bears of the week, uh, Bernstein Bears in the Dark. Um, and this is a really good one. Let's see what these bears are up to today. I've actually been having a lot of fun with these <laughs> Bernstein Bear books, so I'm glad we're doing this this week. Here we go. Being afraid of the dark doesn't just happen to you. It happens sometimes to little bears, too. Brother Bear, said Sister impatiently, are you going to take all day to pick your books? Sister and Brother Bear were at the Bear Country Library. Sister had already chosen her books and was waiting at the checkout desk. Hold your horses, said Brother. I'm looking for a good mystery. Sister Bear usually took out storybooks and books about nature, and sometimes books of poems. Brother liked those too, but lately he'd become interested in mysteries, especially spooky ones. Hey, this one looks good, he said finally. Okay, let's check out. Hmm, said Sister, looking at the cover. It was called The Case of the Crying Cave. It looks scary to me. Say, this is really good, said Brother later that evening when the Bear family had settled down for some reading. Would you like me to read it to you, he asked Sister. Sister was looking at a storybook about three kittens who were arguing about which was the prettiest, and it was a little boring. Are you scared, teased Brother. Of course not, said Sister. She left her book on the floor and climbed onto the bench to sit beside him. The mystery began quietly. It told about some Bear Scouts who were on an overnight camp out. I know a lot of you like the mystery stories that we have in the library. When the, when the scouts discovered a dark secret cave, Brother's mystery began to get a little exciting. And when the cave began to cry and wail, it was anything but quiet. Ooh, cried the deep, dark, mysterious cave. Red Brother with a lot of expression. Ooh. Stop, said Sister, putting her fingers in her ears. That's enough. And she went back to her storybook. Scaredy Bear, Scaredy Bear, teased Brother. And that's quite enough of that, added Papa Bear, looking up from his paper. At the Cubs' bedtime, Papa and Mama said goodnight, turned off the light, and left the Cubs in their usual sleepy darkness. Outside the treehouse, the bright, busy sounds of day had given way to the soft, soothing sounds of night. The quiet conversation of frogs and toads, the soft cry of the owl, the sigh of the night wind. And if you listened very hard, you could almost hear the softest sound of all, the sound of lightning bugs, switching their lights on and off, on and off. And take a look at their faces, right? You can already tell that something's up with sister a little bit, just by that look on her face. But inside the treehouse, Sister Bear wasn't even beginning to fall asleep. That night, the dark didn't seem the least bit quiet and sleepy. In fact, it seemed like the spooky darkness of a scary cave. And the friendly old chest of drawers and the funny clothes tree that Papa had made didn't seem so friendly and funny. They seemed more like cave creatures. So when Brother decided to tease her a little more by making a wailing noise, a really spooky wailing noise, it gave her quite a scare. All right, and you can see him there. Ooh! Mama, Papa, she cried, hurry, come quick! And come quickly they did. Papa rushed into the dark room and tripped over the clothes tree. Mama rushed in after Papa and tripped over him. In the commotion, Sister fell out of bed and landed on both of them. <laughs> then Brother, who had started it all with his spooky wail, turned on the light. What a mess. Sister, still scared, was holding onto Papa. Papa was holding onto the toe he had stubbed. And Mama was looking for the nightcap she had lost in the confusion. All three of them were pretty annoyed with Brother Bear. And look at that little kind of funny smile on his face. 
It turned out to be a very long night in the bear's treehouse. Papa and Mama tried to explain that there was nothing to be afraid of in the dark, except maybe running into a clothes tree and stubbing your toe, but it didn't do any good. Sister absolutely refused to go to sleep with the light off, and Brother positively insisted that he couldn't fall asleep with the light on. Does that ever happen between you and your brothers and sisters? A little bit of arguing about stuff? I know that happens at my house a lot. The next morning, the Bear family was very sleepy-eyed. Boy, said Brother Yawning, I sure don't want to go through another night like that. Neither do I, said Papa, and I think I have an idea that might help. He took Sister's hand. Come with me, he said. Where are we going, she wanted to know. Up to the attic. The attic? But it's dark in the attic, even in the daytime. I know, said Papa, but there's something I want to show you. Anyway, there's nothing so special about the dark. It's just part of nature, like the light. It's your imagination that makes the dark seem spooky sometimes. What's imagination? asked Sister. Imagination is what makes us think that chest of drawers and clothes trees are cave creatures. I wish I didn't have one, said Sister. Oh, don't say that, said Papa. A lively imagination is one of the best things a cub can have. It's imagination that lets us paint pictures, make up poems, invent inventions. The trick is to take charge of your imagination and not let it take charge of you. When they got to the attic, Papa began to rummage through boxes looking for something. Sister tried to follow Papa's advice and not let her imagination take charge. And it worked. A spooky shape turned out to be the shadow of some old tools. What looked like a giant was really some piled up furniture. Here it is, said Papa, my old nightlight, the one I used when I was a cub and had a little trouble falling asleep in the dark. Sister couldn't quite believe that her big, powerful, fat, powerful Papa was ever afraid of the dark. Oh, sure, said Papa. Most of us are at one time or another. How about reading the rest of the case of the crying cave, sister asked brother later that day. Are you sure you want me to? Sure, I want to see how it ends, how it turns out, she insisted. When it turned out that there was nothing very spooky about the terrible wailing noise, it was caused by wind blowing across an opening in the roof of the cave, like the noise you make when you blow across the top of a bottle, sister was a little disappointed. And that night, when she and brother were all settled down in the cozy glow of Papa's old nightlight, she said so. I was pretty disappointed by the way the case of the crying cave ended. Now look at the differences in their faces compared to the previous night. Who has a little kind of scared look on their face this time? It's kind of switched around a little bit. Why, asked Brother. Because, she said, I was hoping the wailing would be a really spooky, scary monster. And she leaned down from her bunk over, brother, over Brother's and made a spooky, scary monster face at him. Cut that out, cried Brother. And then Sister went right to sleep. But Brother lay awake for quite some time, listening to the owl hoots, and thinking that maybe he'd had enough mysteries for a while. And that's the end. Have a good day. Tomorrow we'll do another one. We'll see what these silly bears are up to. I've got a few more, few more good ones up my sleeve, so I can't wait to share them with you. Have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow.